Chairman Conrad's Ethics, Part 1. Here we're going to take a look at Chairman Conrad's February 4th, 2008 press conference where he stated that what Bush inherited was a record 5.6 trillion surplus. This is the graph included in the press conference. Black's Law Dictionary, the third pocket edition, will be used for legal definitions. Material fact, a fact that is significant or essential to the issue or matter at hand. The representation Bush inherited record 5.6 trillion surplus is the fact according to Chairman Conrad. Bush inherited record 5.6 trillion surplus is certainly a material fact, especially when the 5.6 trillion surplus was only a projection based on unrealized assumptions. Let's move to the question of ethics. Here is the code of ethics for government service. I will highlight three of the ten. Number one, put loyalty to the highest moral principles and to country above loyalty to government persons, party, or department. Nine, expose corruption wherever discovered. And ten, uphold these principles ever conscious that public office is a public trust. For background information, we will look at a guide for prospective financial information published by the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants. Prospective financial information covers projections and forecasts. The AICPA Audit and Accounting Guide states, the potential to mislead a third party reader of financial forecasts is greater than for historical statements. The AICPA states, small changes in certain assumed conditions can result in relatively large variations in the prospective results, while relatively large changes in other assumptions cause only minor shifts in the prospective results. The AICPA also states, as the uncertainty surrounding the forecast increases, the range ordinarily would widen. However, the responsible party should consider that if the range becomes too wide, the presentation may not be meaningful to users. Here are the conclusions from the AICPA. One, projections have greater potential for deception. Two, small changes in major assumptions can have a dramatic effect on the projected outcome. And three, a wide range of possible outcomes can render a projection meaningless. Using a projection for deception is a well-known tactic. After the 1929 stock market crash, the following became law. The Securities Act of 1933. From Section 27A, a reference to a projection is misleading unless it is identified as a forward-looking statement and is accompanied by meaningful cautionary statements identifying important factors that could cause actual results to differ materially from those in the forward-looking statement. The 1933 Securities Act identifies the tactic of using projections for deceptive purposes. Moving to the Congressional Budget Office's the Budget and Economic Outlook Fiscal Years 2002 to 2011, what did the CBO say in the January 2001 report? In the summary section, the CBO stated, in the absence of significant legislative changes and assuming that the economy follows the path described in this report, the CBO projects that the total surplus will be accumulating to $5.6 trillion over the 2002 to 2011 period. With reference to the 11 pages of uncertainties in the 2001 report, the CBO included the following. In view of those uncertainties, the outlook for the budget can best be described as a fan of probabilities around the point estimates presented in this report. The fan is initially fairly narrow, but then widens as the period extends. The figure makes clear that nearby projections have nearly the same probability as the baseline. Moreover, projections that are quite different from the baseline also have some significant probability of coming to pass. For example, the figure suggests some probability, albeit small, that the budget might fall into deficit 2006, even without policy changes. The CBO also stated, the primary negative risk is that the current slowdown might turn into a recession. Although forecasters widely anticipated the economic activity would slow, the deceleration has been surprisingly rapid. And as we all know, we had a recession from March 2001 through November 2001. The primary negative risk to the budget was realized. 
The CBO is also clear. The baseline 5.6 trillion projection is not a prediction of future outcomes. Concerning the 5.6 trillion surplus budget projection, the following are Chairman Conrad's two positions on this one issue. June 27, 2001, Conrad position number one. The famous CBO fan chart that showed estimates of uncertainty based on CBO's past forecasting records should have warned us that there was nothing certain about a projection of 5.6 trillion of surpluses over the next 10 years. And here is the famous CBO fan chart, which of course shows the possibility of deficits by 2006. In 2001, the CBO included the fan chart because it explained the, their view of the uncertainties. And in 2001, Chairman Conrad also noted there was nothing certain about the budget projection. Here is Chairman Conrad's position two on the 5.6 trillion projected budget surplus. On July 11, 2007, Chairman Conrad, when talking about the failed fiscal record of President Bush, said the result has been that the 5.6 trillion projected surplus he, President Bush, inherited has been wiped out. He presents this as if in 2001, the 5.6 trillion was gonna be certain. And on this graph on February 4th, 2008, he says it was a record 5.6 trillion surplus and doesn't even reference the fact that it was a projection. Senator Kent Conrad's February 4th, 2008 comments were the president, he inherited surpluses, forecasted surpluses of 5.6 trillion. Again, there is no reference to anything being uncertain about that projection. Well, Chairman Conrad's June 27, 2001 statement, there was nothing certain about a projection of 5.6 trillion of surpluses over 10 years is now a clear contradiction to his February 4, 2008 statement saying Bush inherited a record 5.6 trillion surplus. Bush inherited record 5.6 trillion surplus. This statement is in conflict with the CBO 2001 report describing the fan of possibilities the AICPA stating a wide range of possibilities can make a projection meaningless. The CBO not predicting a 5.6 trillion surplus. The 1933 Securities Act, Section 27A, highlighting the need to include cautionary statements to avoid deception. And Chairman Conrad's own words on June 27, 2001, cautioning that based on the famous CBO fan chart, a 5.6 trillion budget surplus over the next 10 years was not certain. Returning to Black's Law Dictionary, we see misrepresentation, the act of making a false or misleading assertion about something, usually with the intent to deceive. The assertion so made, an assertion that does not accord with the facts. This graph point is clearly a misrepresentation. Returning to Black's Law Dictionary, implied intent, a person's state of mind that can be inferred from speech or conduct or from language to which the person is party. Chairman Conrad's June 27, 2001 statement, there was nothing certain about a projection of 5.6 trillion, is a complete contradiction to his February 4, 2008 statement saying that Bush inherited 5.6 trillion surplus. The change in Chairman Conrad's position on the 5.6 trillion projected surplus implies intent to misrepresent. This may seem trivial to some, but the AICPA says, the potential to mislead a third-party reader of financial forecasts is greater than that for historical financial statements. And Chairman Conrad is using a financial forecast to deceive. According to Black's Law Dictionary, fraud, a misrepresentation made recklessly without belief in its truth to induce a person to act. Is Chairman Conrad trying to induce Americans to act by voting for Democrats using a misrepresentation? Public office is a public trust. Chairman Conrad, is your intentional misrepresentation of material facts associated with the 2001 CBO projection a violation of public trust? Is this a violation of public trust to state Bush inherited record 5.6 trillion surplus when in 2001 you stated there was nothing certain about a projection of 5.6 trillion of surpluses over 10 years.